<laughs> All right, everybody. Uh, welcome to this 15-minute session on um, GraphQL uh, GraphQL with the Neo4j GraphQL library. My name is Max Anderson, and I'm a developer advocate here with the Neo4j Developers Relations team. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with GraphQL, this session will give you uh, an introduction uh, how it can be used in conjunction with Neo4j. Uh, if you're not that familiar with Neo4j, some of these concepts might uh, sound a little bit foreign to you, but hopefully uh, I'll show you how easy it is to get like up and running with the platform. All right, so uh, the Neo4j GraphQL library builds on top of GraphQL and it's a part of our Neo4j graph data platform. Um, and it's a highly flexible, low-code library that's developed for, for rapid API development to, to, to tap into the power of connected data. Uh, so you will use the Neo4j graph model uh, from the database layer to your backend layer and really accelerate the way that you're developing your APIs. Um, so typically, when you build a GraphQL uh, API service, uh, you would do some kind of uh, description of your data in terms of uh, type definition, and you will have mutations. And then you would implement some uh, resolvers to kind of get that data uh, out to, uh, to your client. Um, but um, since the Neo4j GraphQL library builds on top of... Um, uh, of the graph Q, uh, GraphQL, uh, it will make it a little bit easier to work with. So uh, what we offer is basically a, a way to automate the generation of uh, queries and mutation for all of your CRUD operations. Uh, so you will be able to map your nodes and relationships and by, by just annotating things with Cypher directives or relationship directives. And then when you get to the querying side of things, you will be able to do a lot of um filtering and sorting options and stuff like that from from the query endpoint of of things um in addition to that you get things like pagination out of the box there's a plugin for authentication and authorization to manage your access control through your api there's an ogm that you can use to programmatically map your your backend objects to uh, database uh, labels and things like that, and there is also a GraphQL toolbox that you can use to even accelerate things a little bit further. I'll show you a little bit of these things as we go along, but um, these are the things that I'm going to be tapping into during this session. Uh, we will not be able to co cover everything, but I will have some links in in, in the end that will give you. Uh, a way to get to the documentation and keep exploring. Um, right, so this is the the, uh, the, uh, the overview for this session, but I'll just leave that in here for reference. So you can check the slides later and go through uh, uh, everything uh, that you find uh, interesting. So the first thing we got to do, so the GraphQL library works with the Neo4j database, right? So there's a couple of ways that you can actually uh, get one up and running. And so the uh, the options that you have uh, is either a managed instance, a self-managed instance, or a, a local instance. So basically, um, uh, AuraDB offers a free version that we're going to be using uh, for, uh, for, uh, for this session. Um, and uh, it's free forever. There are some limitations on how many nodes and relationships that you can have. But uh, if you want to experiment with things like data science libraries or the extended functionality of APOC and so, things like that, there's also a three-day day trial in, uh, in Neo4j Sandbox. Uh, and alternatively, you can just download it on your own computer running Neo4j desktop. Uh, you can do a bare install if you if you dare or you can uh, just uh, run the uh, Docker command that's uh, in the bottom right of the slide here uh, to get up and running with that. So once you got your, um, your, um, your database, you will have to get some data. And we're going to be using a pre-allocated data set uh, with the schema that looks like this. It's really simple. It has a person and uh, you have some relationships uh, to a movie, uh, acted in, follow, so on and so forth. Um, so if we take a look 
at how we can start uh, setting up a database. All you have to do is you go to neo4j.com uh, slash RADB. You press that button that says start free and you will have to register with your email and password or, or just uh, log in using the Google social login. If you're logging in for the first time uh, with email and password, you'll have to verify your email. Um, but as soon as you've done that, you'll be prompted to accept the terms and conditions. And after all of that is done and you're ready to go, uh, you can issue from the uh, console. You can issue a free instance. Um, and the free instances, you can choose with some pre-allocated data sets. Um, it will take a couple of minutes to get this up and running. We will be choosing the, uh, the movie ones for this. And you'll download the credentials before you, before you click any further. Otherwise, you'll have no way of actually accessing the database. Um, <clears throat> then we will check. Um, um, then we'll check that we actually have some data in the database. We'll just open up the new workshop pre preview and we'll move over to the query section. Uh, and here we we'll log in with the credentials that we're actually just downloaded to our project folder. So in the query section, you can actually issue Cypher queries directly to the database. And you will, we're just going to check here that we have some nodes in our database by just running a simple match uh, return count n or something like that. Yeah. And so we can see here that we have 171 objects in our database. And uh, we can also take a quick look at the schema here uh, to make sure that everything is as it should be. All right. So, Back to GraphQL stuff. So in the Neo4j Graph, um, GraphQL library, um, we, you will have to build out your type definitions as well. I'll show you an easy way to do that later. But uh, this is basically the easiest type of type definition you can do, where, the, where you will just say movie, and it will map against any labels that you have in your database that's called uh, that's called move, movie. But if that is too, uh, if, if you want to have something called something else in your type definition, then it's called in your database. You can always annotate it with uh, at nodes directive as well. You can find the rest of that in the documentation. So um, the library will support all the normal GraphQL data types, and it will map it to Neo4j data types as well. But we'll also add it in things like, uh, temporal types and um, and spatial types, uh, so you get the full kind of uh, data types that are also supported in in Neo4j. Okay, so this might be a little bit of a simple type definition for us. So we can expand on that, and we can actually um, uh, put some relationships in, and we can do that with the relationship directive, uh, where we just have to specify which type we're interested in and which direction of the relationship we, we want to look uh, look at. So, for example, from the movie, if, if we have the movie node and we have the actors node, uh, you will have the relationship actor that comes in from actor to movie. Um, it, you have to wrap your hand, head around that a little bit, but for example, if you have a relationship that actually has uh, some properties on it, we can define those properties in an interface in our type definition, and uh, then just tell the the, uh, the directive which proper uh, which interface to actually look for when resolving that in um, uh, later down the line. All right, so once you've finished, uh, you might have a big type definition with something like this. But we said that we wanted a rapid API development experience, right? We do not want to type everything out like this on our own. So that's why we have developed something that's called the Neo4j uh, GraphQL uh, toolbox. And if you log into uh, graphqltoolbox.neo4j.io, uh, you will be able to log in with the credentials towards your database. And as soon as you got that up and running, um, 
it will do introspection on your database to find all of the types that you will be able to expose. So it takes a couple of seconds and then it will pop up. But here uh, we might see that some of these are inferred a little bit uh, weird. So people acted in, for example, we, we know that that might be actors instead. So we might just type in actors there instead. Uh, people directed by might be directors, producers, reviewers, writers, and so on. We can continue doing this for the whole uh, uh, the whole type de definition, but um, we can also here start to query the database directly. So we can look at which movies we have in our database. We might want to extract the title from that, and we might want to see which actors, their name, and when they're born, for example. Um, so we can send that query off to the database, and we can see here on the right-hand side, um the the response that we get and this we didn't have to write any resolvers or anything like that we're able to query our database already um but uh thing is we might want to build an actual service from this right we do not just want to play around in a web app so what we can do is that we can um just run these simple commands we create a new folder initiate a node project make a JS file and install our dependencies. And that is basically everything we need to get started. So what we'll do is we will open up this index.js. We'll get in some uh, of our dependencies, the, GraphQL, uh, the Neo4j GraphQL library, the Apollo server that we can use to actually display things, Neo4j driver, and some credentials here for our database driver. And then we will just paste in these type definitions that we use the toolbox to, to actually acquire. And, um, and then uh, we will just instantiate a driver. Uh, this driver object just needs a, a URI. It needs a username and a password. Um, <clears throat> and as soon as you've done that, you will pass this driver to our a Neo4j GraphQL object, right? Uh, and together with our type definitions. And as soon as you've, um, as soon as you have that object, you will just create a schema from these type definitions and the driver, and you will pass that schema to your um, Apollo server instance, basically. And then we will just start this instance by calling listen to it. And then we might also want to um, log out a message just to tell us uh, at what interface we'll be able to call this from. So this is all we need to actually get started uh, with the Neo4j GraphQL library. Uh, and to be able to run this, we'll just open up one of the terminals. See? All right. So. First, since we have some credentials that we need, we're going to have to export the uh, .env file that we actually downloaded from the, um, uh, from the Aura um, website. And then we can just run npm start to get an endpoint that we can start to query. And that is basically everything you need to be able to start querying your own service. But all right, so if you take a look at the kind of queries you can do, uh, you can query, let's say, people here. You want to return the name with a movie of a t with a title and a tagline, for example. This is by far the one of the simplest queries you can do. But you might want to be selective about what you return back, right? So then we have filtering. So we will have pre-generated a lot of filters that you can actually apply, and uh, you will put these in in. Uh, in a where clause or whatever you want to call it. Um, and then you will have your, your, uh, your field that you want to be filtering on and then the value that you want to filter. And here you can add in other types of comparisons and operators and things like that, but just extending that field name. So for example, you could have name underscore starts with, and then just say Jane, and it would return every person that has a Jane in their, in their name instead. Hi, Simone. Hi, Am I running Hi, out of time? You, you are. You are. I'm so sorry. Oh, no. All right. Do you want like a 
another 60 seconds. I can give you another 60 seconds. <laughs> you know, this was my <laughs> next slide. So um, perfect. Um, I'll, I'll just uh, say this. If you want to learn more about uh, the GraphQL library and how you can query this, um, you'll be able to find uh, things here on these uh, these links. And uh, you can always, you will get the slides sent out as well. And you will be able to look at some more queries if you're interested in that. And with that, I'll just say thank you for me.